Hello again. Uh, so in this uh, webcast, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about uh, the topic for this first week, which is uh, sort of an introduction to second language writing, uh, the history, the theory, and the approaches. So uh, to get us started, I think everybody by now probably has started to write or has posted already a self-introduction in which you've talked a little bit about your experience with writing, either a first memory, learning how to write, or a, a special moment in writing in either your first or second language. And the process of thinking about that and composing that should be a, a great springboard to reading the, the topics for this particular week, which is chapter one from Ferris and Hedgecock, and then a journal article um, by Wang and Wen, which uh, looks at uh, students uh, writing in their second language and influence from their first language. So to kind of uh, get the context started here, Ferris and Hedgecock basically do a nice job trying to summarize what has been 25, 30, almost 40 years of research and talking a little bit about where second language writing came from. So to give you a little bit of sort of a, a quick overview, uh, second language writing itself is only about 25 years old. Um, it was one of sort of the last things to sort of uh, emerge in applied linguistics or educational linguistics or second language education, which I'm going to use all sort of synonymously. And the reason for that is that educational linguistics had been deeply immersed in grammar translation and audiolingualism for a very, very long time and writing was not seen as something that was very important. And it wasn't only until there were lots of different uh, uh, socioeconomic or sociopolitical changes, uh, namely lots and lots of international students who were second language speakers and writers of English who were coming to Anglophone countries to go to college and university. And this changed uh, you know, how teachers and programs in the field responded to a new body of writers whose language needs were very different from uh, the traditional quote-unquote native speaker of English who had been, or mon monolingual writers who had been in, in school at that time. So another thing to consider is that uh, second language writing comes out of linguistics historically. Uh, second language education and educational linguistics are fields that are deeply immersed in social sciences which largely took a very quantitative uh, look in terms of research of how to see how people learned and how to describe how knowledge is produced. Where composition theory, our first language composition theory, came out of the humanities, out of English departments, and saw things in more qualitative ways. So second language writing sort of is, is sort of a hybrid between two very, very different paradigms on how, uh, how we know how people learn how to write. And in that hybridity, there's a bit of a struggle. And you can certainly see that in a number of journal articles. If you're reading things out of second language education, they tend to be uh, uh, not quite positivist, but they're, you know, you have your introduction, your methods, the participants. This is very typically social science. Uh, if you read things in composition studies, especially out of journals like uh, the, the Three Cs, which is a college, the college um, uh, composition and communication journal, one of the leading journals, those uh, pieces are more like essays, if you will. So second language writing, for example, uh, the, the linguists, for example, Vivian Zamel in the mid-70s and early 80s started writing about this and saying, hey, you know, we need to actually learn from our colleagues in, in composition studies how actually to teach students writing. So for many, many, many years, second language writing sort of borrowed lock, stock, and barrel from first language composition theory. Uh, namely the process approach to writing, which was writing in multiple drafts, students kind of come up with their own topics, uh, rather than it being a teacher assigned topic, uh, students would get peer feedback, teacher feedback, so on and so forth. Uh, many of you may have experienced learning how to write in this particular way. So that's the process approach, and uh, Ferris and Hedgecock go into uh, some detail about that approach. Uh, there are other articles like Paul Matsuda who kind of gives you uh, a history of the process approach and I believe I've listed his one of his articles down at the bottom of that list on the first page. <clears throat> also Ferris and Hedgecock talk about things that are important specifically to second language writing which is contrastive rhetoric 
uh, or I believe it's also known as intercultural rhetoric. And in that process, linguists sort of compare and contrast what features of students' first language they bring into the composing of their second language. So for example, do Russian students write in a particular way in English? In other words, do they bring uh, the way in which students compose an essay in Russian into composing English? Uh, there was a very important article that was written in 1966 by Robert Kaplan uh, in which he tries to uh, determine if students from different language backgrounds write in a particular way. And that article set off a whole field called Contrastive Rhetoric. And Ferris and Hitchcock touch on that and talk a little bit about uh, how that uh, field has contributed to our knowledge of writing and also talked about some of the controversies involved in that field as well. So, uh, what I'll ask you to do is to, to read that chapter, think about it, think about your own experience with writing, and then to move on to the second article, uh, which is Wang and Wen, and it's first language use in the second language, uh, second language composing process, an exploratory study of 16 Chinese EFL writers. And in this article, these authors basically try to see to the degree to which uh, first language influences second language composing, and to what degree and to what stage or level. So for example, they're looking at uh, 16 female writers uh, who are ranging from beginners of English to more advanced writers of English. And through, by using Think, think Aloud protocols, they interview the students to find out uh, how often they think in English as they're composing in English and how much they're actually thinking in Mandarin uh, when they're composing in English. And it's kind of a nice way to actually think about how students uh, draw on their first language when they're composing in different degrees. For example, uh, you know, there's sort of the global approach to writing, to thinking about the organization, the structure, sort of these larger issues. Then there's the more discourse level, the sentence level. Uh, does first and second language come into, come into place in these two particular processes? So they go into great detail talking about this. And it's something for you to think about for yourself. If you've done any academic writing or narrative writing in your second language, to what degree do you think in your first language? And does the process of writing go back and forth? If the task becomes more complicated, do you think more in your second language or in your first language? So those are some things to kind of get us uh, started thinking about. And I hope you enjoy the first chapter and the journal article from the Journal of Second Language Writing. And I look forward to reading your posts and uh, commenting and providing insights uh, from my own experience. Thank you very much.